presenting my first robotics project, a car which can be controlled via Bluetooth. As you saw in the video, the user is able to make the car go straight, turn right and turn left. In addition, the user can see the car's acceleration and orientation on the screen, which is sent from Bluetooth on an Android application. The components that I'm using include an MPU6050 inertial measurement unit consisting of an accelerometer and gyroscope. In addition, I am using an HC05 Bluetooth module, which is very popular on Arduino systems. I have four DC motors, which are 2.4 volts each, connected to an L298N H-Bridge motor driver. This makes sure that the Arduino does not get too much of voltage input because it acts as a voltage regulator. These are all connected to an Arduino Uno microcontroller. I'm using the AT Mega 328P. To power the entire system, I'm using a LiPo battery, a lithium polymer 7.4 volts battery. Although I do recommend a higher capacity one because if you want much more battery life. The circuit diagram can be seen here. As you can see, the way you connect these components to the Arduino is quite standard. I'll put links below on how they actually should be connected. But in this diagram, you can see that, first of all, all these components have a common ground here on the Arduino itself. I have my HC05 connected up here to pins 10 and 11. Now I don't use pins 0 and 1 because that will interfere with the serial port. My transmitter and receiver are pins 11 and 10 respectively. And then I power it in the 3.3 volts input here. For the MPU6050, I've connected it to pins A4 and A5 along with the 5 volts input which is shared from a breadboard here. Along with connecting the interrupt pin to pin 2. Again, this is the standard way you connect an MPU6050. For the motor driver, this has the most connections because you have enable 1 and 2, enable 3 and 4, input 1, input 2, and it is connected all the way here like this. I followed the standard way of connecting this. There's a video online on how to do it. So the one thing which you need to consider is that since the L298N powers the Arduino, because the battery power goes into here, the 5 volts output of this one must be connected to the VN of the Arduino because since you won't be using a computer, it'll be wireless. The Arduino must receive its power from somewhere. So that is pretty much the circuit diagram. These are all standard parts, which means there'll be many resources online on how to connect these to the Arduino. I recommend you watch those because they are created by experts, which are very knowledgeable. For my design, I used SolidWorks to create like a general layout of what I want and where I expect each part to go. So as you can see, the L298N is in the middle. The Arduino and the breadboard are on each side because this will enable the best wiring. I connected the motors from superglue on each side of the board along with the wheels. Now I didn't include the wiring here because that is quite complex and that needs, I believe SolidWorks electrical. You need to use an electrical add-on to actually design the wiring here. But as long as you have enough of space and the wires are not too tight, then you should be able to have a good connection everywhere. I'm now going to explain my entire code. For the MPU6050 accelerometer and gyroscope processing, you need to download two libraries from Jeff Roberg's GitHub page. The first one is I2C dev and the second one is MPU6050. I've taken the source code a bit and modified it to fit my specific needs. The first thing you have to include is wire.h. Since the MPU6050 is an I2C device, which is connected to the data and the clock pins, which is the SCL and the SDA, if you look at the MPU6050, it has those pins there. And they go to the analog pins A4 and A5 on the Arduino Uno. So wire.h lets you communicate with that and get values. The first thing I do is define an MPU6050 instance or an object, a quaternion object and a gravity vector. The quaternion gives you the yaw pitch and the roll angles for which I have an empty vector here. I also have the FIFO buffer to get the values each time. 
I have one more vector for the scaled acceleration. Since the MPU data is raw, it needs to be converted to the scale value. If you look at the MPU 6050 datasheet, you can get the scaling factor that you need based on what range you will work with. Since the pin is connected to 2 for the interrupt on the MPU, that's my interrupt pin definition here. So initially it's false because there are no interrupts. And then if the data is ready on the DMP, which stands for digital motion processor, this is included on all initial measurement unit modules. You, you enable the interrupt. Initially the, the processor is not ready, so it's false. And then I have two uh, integers for MPU status and dev status. For the AC05, the transmitter pin is 10. The receiver pin is 11, as you saw in the connection. And then I define a Bluetooth instance of the software serial module, passing in the pins respectively. Lastly, for the L298N, the enable A is pin 9, input 1 and 2 is pin 8 and 7. So for me, I have on the left side, input 1 and 2, the left two motors on the car corresponds to 1 and 2 here. On the right side, I have inputs 3 and 4, motor B. So enable B is set to pin 3. In my setup, which runs only once at the start, before the loop, I have my serial and my Bluetooth begin at 9600 baud rate. This is the one you should use for Bluetooth modules. There are other values like 38,000 and stuff, but this one was the most stable for me. I initialize the I2C connection, the wire, and then I just print out one here initializing devices. I initialize the MPU 6050, so this is taken from Jeff Roberg's source code. I test the connection and make sure it's successful here. The next thing I do is initialize the DMP, which is the digital motion processor. I set my offsets based on my dad, my uh, experimental values. I did a lot of testing on this MPU 6050 before I came up with these numbers here. So it might vary for you, but it should be around this range here. I then calibrate the gyro and the accelerometer like this. I set the enable to true for the DMP. I attach my interrupt pin here, which is a rising edge. So which means that it's going from zero to one. And then I get my status of the MPU. Then I just set the Boolean, wait for one second. Then the next thing I do is for the L298 end pins, I set them all to output like this here. Now here is my loop. For this, I'm using functions built in here. So go straight, turn right and turn left, which I'll explain in a bit. This part gets you the MPU day data. So I'm getting the acceleration because here I have pointer variables, which are these ones here. And I'm passing in a pointer because you want the variable to update itself. If, if you just pass in like AX, AY and AZ without the pointer, it means that you will make a copy of it. So it'll not actually update. You will need to output it and then assign it. When you pass the pointers, you pass the reference value. So the memory address and it'll directly assign that variable like that. I then get my quaternion, the gravity vector, and then I get the yaw pitch and the roll, which is stored in YPR here. And then I scale my acceleration because I'm scaling it by, I'm dividing it by 4096 for the correct scaling for me. So since this gives you the value in G, it needs to be converted to meters per second square. So for that, I just multiply by 9.81 here. I'm scaling it to 8G based on this number. So I get my acceleration, which is AX, AY, and AZ. I then check if my Bluetooth is enabled. So if it is, I will read the input from the screen. If it is straight, I will go straight, right, turn right, and left, turn left. So for going straight, I set my input one and input three to high. So the motors on both sides, and then input two and four, those correspond to the ground, so those are low. And then I set a speed here, analog right, then shut off. So when I shut off, it shuts off entirely. To turn right, again, they both are on, but as you see here, the enable B is a lot slower because you have to make the left side wheels turn faster if you want it to turn right. And for turn left, it's the same thing, but I just flipped the speeds of enable A and B. 
because this time I want the speeds on the right side to be faster to make the robot turn left. The next thing I do is pass in my acceleration in a vector along with the gravity values, along with the yaw pitch and the roll values like this here. So this prints it out, which means it passes it to the Bluetooth module and then you can see it on, on the screen. So that is it for the entire code. And there are many resources if you want to understand this in more detail. But this is how I did it. And I will upload this for your reference. So that is pretty much it for my project. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. I have two courses on Udemy on motion planning techniques. If you're interested in that, I recommend you check out the link. With that being said, I'll see you next time. Bye.